Um, growing up, we did not go to church at all. You know, my mother obviously knew what church was. She, her father was a pastor, but she just did not practice. Uh, but both my parents, you know, taught by example or led by example, I should say, because it was never anything explicitly said. But growing up, we knew that you must treat people equally. You know, a, a trip to the store or something took forever, you know, because my mother would talk to everyone from the vendor outside to, to, the, to the person who's bagging the groceries, you know, to everybody. She knew everybody's names and everything was a production, you know, so to speak. They gave to people, they ate and shared meals with people. So, it, so that's what I grew up seeing. But as an adult, it, when I was here in, um, in the U.S., so I'm from Zimbabwe, I, I came to school in the U.S. Um, when I was in the U.S., I kind of searched for my own faith community. And then in, in 2000 or so, in the early 2000s, um, I went to, I, I was living in Boston at that time, I went to a Black History Month celebration. I there was this pastor. It was in a predominantly black neighborhood um, in, in Boston, the church, and the congregation was predominantly black. But there was this white pastor who was speaking. He was speaking about social justice from an all people's perspective, not just a black person or white person perspective. Um, so that, that really struck me. And then I found out his name was Pastor Heinemeyer and he was pastor at a Lutheran church. And I looked at the address for the church. It was a church that was literally just like down the block from me. So the minute I walked through you know, those big red doors, walked into um, Resurrection Lutheran Church in Boston uh, in early 2000s, you know, everything kind of started making sense now, you know, kind of um, you know, that, that need that was in me to do good and, and to go out and live, live it out in the world. Um, you know, it all kind of made sense, like where it, it came from, um, not just for my parents, of course, but, you know, kind of like the, the root of it all. And so for me, being a Lutheran just meant, you know, faith in public action. So that, that really, you know, kind of was my introduction into uh, what Lutheranism was, if that's a word. Yeah, I think that's a word. And then when I moved to here to New York in 2008, I went to a couple of churches. I think it, I think I probably only came here like a year later or a year or so later. And when I came here, it, it had the same sense of, you know, coming home, of, of being in a place where, you know, how I chose to express um, my belief in Jesus Christ was, was, it was, um, you know, was lived out. I was first involved in the maternal health initiative. It was amazing because I think it was kind of like taking the next step, right? It was, um, it was for us, you know, this local initiative, which had the educational piece behind it, the awareness piece, but our impact and the money we raised went to Africa and helped with, um, you know, the initiatives there for fistula. We were living out, you know, this, our faith goals and our faith mission like, outside of our of our little world here. It was, it was uh, impactful for me or you know, a huge impact on my life just because it wasn't um, just something you gave money to, it was something we were directly involved with. So that was, I think, like, you know, the beginning of just like this, this, this thought in my head that I can do something locally that has the global um, impact. For me, every single sermon here it's kind of like a call to action. There's always a message in it for, that, that inspires me to take the next step. I did that through what I called uh, the Christmas Joy Project. And the Christmas Joy Project was really uh, my response to God's life. Growing up for me, like Christmas was this amazing time where joyful times, celebrations, it was a time of plenty. Like if you had nothing, Christmas was the one time you had plenty. I come from Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe, if you don't know, is it's Southern Africa, and it's a country which right now for me is an example of how a government really fails its people. You know when you can look at somebody and just see like in their eyes that they have no idea where their next meal is coming from? I understand that they, you know, all this happens here too, but their social services in Zimbabwe, there's like absolutely like nothing. Was for me, as I thought about it, you know, putting Christ back in Christmas, 
and spreading the joy of that to celebrating the birth of Jesus with uh, disadvantaged uh, people in Zimbabwe. And it, it was amazing. It was so much fun. <laughs> and I, I think I had so I had so much fun. Um, they, we had Christmas party for uh, orphans, and that was amazing as well as uh, with street children, which was really just like a major dance party. And then we also did uh, um, a Christmas party for the elderly. And that for me was also, was also one that was, uh, that was like amazing just because, you know, we danced and, and, and sang with the, with the elderly people. It wasn't just us giving them food. It was, you know, a big celebration with them. So I, 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 you know, I, I was like moved to continue this and to have this as something that's an ongoing thing that I keep doing every single year. Um, and then this year, you know, I, I started kind of feeling it again. You know, I, I can't, I, I can't say exactly which sermon it was, but it was sometime in August or July, and it, it was kind of like. You know, kind of like that something that puts a fire underneath you that just kind of like propelled me to move forward to the next step. I know that when I do the Christmas Joy, it's just kind of a one-time event. So I was looking at it more as wanting to do something that was ongoing. And so I just started what's called uh, Amabilis uh, Social Investment. It's really a social entrepreneurship venture. And the idea is uh, we have, we partner with organizations here and help the people who are in Zimbabwe that are unemployed, and and we work in partnership, um, you know, to to provide IT resources. So if your company partners with us on these ventures, you're not just providing IT resources; you are also now doing good and helping you know, somebody in Zimbabwe. Thinking about illegal immigration because we have it here, and I know that, uh, and I know, and we also have it in Zimbabwe ways the Zimbabweans are, are illegally immigrating to neighboring countries. And I know talking to a lot of the illegal immigrants, it's not because it's a choice, but it's more of the, you know, the economic pressures. This is the only response that they have to providing for their families. Um, so when I thought about this, I was trying to think of a way to create jobs so that people can stay in Zimbabwe in order to provide for their own families. and and. You know, thinking about it the whole, in the bigger picture, it was you know the, the the idea of you know love your neighbors as yourselves. You know that's really what I was thinking of. I wasn't thinking of just giving them a handout once in a while. I was trying to think of a way that they can continually be able to provide for their families. So for me, you know, being an Advent, coming to here every Sunday, and you know, just the whole community, it's, it's really for me, every single sermon is a call to action. And I call it like living out loud. It's not just a one-time event. It's what do you do like after the sermon ends? Like what happens next? Keep talking a lot. No, that's good. The more we have, the better. Right? Oh, it makes life I was just like talking. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh.